Jordan. What's up, man? How you doing tonight? Good, man. Uh, just, you know, much happier to do these shows back in the wind column. Uh, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> it's, it certainly feels a whole lot better doing it on a win uh, than it does last week with that that miserable loss that we had. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we, you and I both felt like this team would come out and play, uh, you know, with with some fire and have a little bit of a response. Um, we didn't quite get that, uh, yeah. considering what the first half was. Right. Um, but they woke up, you know, played a lot better football, especially the offense. Uh, I thought the defense had a really complete performance um, for the most part. Um, and yeah, you 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 made plays and at the key points in the game, and I mean that's it's better than what you did last week. So I mean, at, at this point, it's 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 about improving over <laughs> from that performance, um, right? And, and trying to build that confidence back again. So we'll we'll see kind of how they parlay that into next week because if you're playing another team with with some good athletes and really good defense some physical corners um so and, and you know the you can't afford to have the, the some of the miscues you had today uh, again next week and expect to win by double digits but uh happy with the win regardless yeah absolutely look it's it's always good to uh to get a win um we were we were pretty spirited with our evaluation of the team this past week um and i don't think either of us feel any differently heading out of this game than any of the stuff that we said you know coming out of the louisville game i don't feel like we reacted out of emotion out of that game and and we certainly won't do that out of this game either um you know there still are some there's still some problems with this team yeah i think it was pretty clear um you know just diving right into it um talking about that first half, you know, me and me, me and you talked about on Wednesday when we were previewing this Virginia Tech game about that spirited effort that you mentioned, right? We thought Clemson would come out a little bit, maybe hair on fire, a little bit more spirited, um, a little bit pissed off, if if you will, uh, you know, just quoting one Cade Klubnik, right? Um, and in that first half, it was anything but that on offense. Um, We'll just start with the offense first. That first half for of the offense was filled with um, some poor decision making uh, at the quarterback position by Kate Klubnick. It was filled with um, crucial penalties at the worst of times. It was filled with drop balls. Um, there were a couple, you know, we went on drives and we just killed our own drives um, with poor decisions, penalties, drop balls, um, bad execution. I was just very inconsistent in the first half on offense. It looked a lot like the offense of old of Clemson where, yes, they would drive the ball. Yes, they could move the ball, um, but they just couldn't quite put it together and punch it in the end zone. And that really was the first half in a nutshell from my perspective. What did you feel about the offense specifically in that first half uh, and how they performed against this Virginia Tech defense? Yeah, um, still disjointed uh, in, in a lot of ways. Um, you know, it just it, kind of similar to what you saw last week. It, it just guys, you know, not making plays, some drops, Cade, you know, making a poor decision on, on that interception. Although, you know, he, he did give Jake a, a good shot at it. But, you know, ideally you don't want your quarterback, you know, kind of throwing on off his back foot, mm -hmm. just throwing it up. You know, on you know, in the opposite direction of his where his body is going, because typically that's that's going to be a a disastrous play more often than it's a successful play. Um, you know, I, I thought you did have some some spotty success, you know, running the ball. Um, you know, I, I just still kind of inconsistent as far as run blocking. You didn't block up counter all that well at, at times. Um, of course, I'll have to go back and watch the tape. And obviously, the, the injuries that you had early in that game on the offensive line didn't help. Obviously, uh, Tristan Lay had to get, go out and then Marcus Tate. Um, and so you had Elijah Thurman, true freshman, and Harris Sewell, uh, true sophomore, you know, both playing uh, on, on the left side of the line. I thought they held up pretty well, but, you know, that's, you know, that, that that's kind of contributes to some of the disjointedness because you, you just – when you have your starting five out there, they have the chemistry, they, they understand everything. And it, it, there's an adjustment that uh, period when you have to insert new guys into the, into the lineup. 
uh, receivers weren't handling press very well. Um, that, that's that's a thing that that's becoming a trend. You know, teams that are that have manned up our corners and, and played really tight coverage. You know, they they've had a lot of success. Louisville did. Virginia Tech did um, until, of course, this, when we talk about the second half, when they started to, uh, when Clemson started to make them pay a little bit, um, just a lot of things that weren't going well. Um, I, it, I've already mentioned, that, you know, the drops. You know, you had some opportunities, some plays that were there. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's it, it, it was a performance that was kind of reminiscent of of last week, but. Um, you know, you did. It didn't kill you tonight because, of course, your defense showed up. So um, that's good. Yeah, absolutely. It it's sometimes it's puzzling just to watch this offense operate uh, at certain times um, because the talent's there. Like you mentioned, we we have um immense talent on this offense and when k klovnik is clicking and and the receivers are creating separation and going to going up and getting the ball and you know everything's going well right um you mentioned the, the injuries on the offensive line i think those were those were pretty big tonight but credit hair sewell credit elijah thurman for going out there and playing a heck of a game man um to get thrust into that sort of situation is never easy um but you always expect for those guys to be ready and they were certainly ready tonight um i don't remember seeing those guys really get blown up at all um i didn't notice them look out of place or or giving up any sort of big type of plays not that they played perfect obviously uh we had our we had our own struggles in the running game tonight um at at various points you you kind of outlined that we broke some bigger running plays that made our rushing game look a lot better than it actually was on a on a play to play basis tonight. Um, but it was it was a very frustrating first half. Um, and I don't think we can we can turn the page from the first half without talking about the kicking game once again. And that field goal that we attempted that ultimately ended up in really the only points for Virginia Tech tonight outside of that garbage touchdown that that we'll get into a little bit later in the show. But Talking about this kicking game, Jordan, we, we, we've got to talk about this because at this point, um, and I think you mentioned it to me backstage before we came on the show, is like this is unacceptable at this point. Um, I think your, your, your last five field goal attempts or something at that point had, had, had resulted in blocks or, or something crazy like that. Uh, but regardless of what the stat is, the consistent breakdown – in the coverage, the consistent block field goals. And then today it goes about as bad as it can go. Cause it not only does it get blocked, they return it for six points the other way. And that was the difference in at least the first half of this game. To me, there has to be drastic changes made on the special teams as far as coaching. Um, it just has to at this point. Um, you clearly saw the issues all the all, as far back as the Florida State game. It really got exposed. Florida State blocked two kicks on you. Well, Virginia Tech or Virginia did the same thing, and now Virginia Tech did it. Uh, this is not going away, and it's clearly not getting any any better. So, what are your thoughts on these continued struggles uh, for the kicking game for for these Clemson Tigers? Yeah, um, it, it, it's. Special teams in general, I mean, the the apparatus, the however we have it organized. I mean, Mike Reed has the special teams coordinator title, but the, the reality is, is during the week there is a team of guys that that work on special team analysts, uh, led by the director of special teams, uh, Mark uh, Will Gilchrist. I'm sorry, I almost said Mark. Um, I, I'm, I'm thinking of Marcus Gilchrist, good good player. I I, I miss that guy, um, but. Um, I, I think you need to change how your whole setup is there. I mean, it, if you can have two separate defensive line coaches, you can have a, a coach dedicated to special teams, especially with the rules and about on-field coaches, whatever we're doing is not working. And it's been a, a, a trend throughout the Dabo Swinney tenure, but it has been really awful this year. Clemson is 
130th in the country in special teams efficiency, according to ESPN. 130th. There are, what, uh, 134 teams in the FBS? That is terrible, man. That is awful. That, that's that got to be worse than the Power Four. That's awful. And it's not that we're not recruiting decent kickers, especially decent kickers. We, we've, we've had really, you know, you know, Robert Gunn was a was a really highly touted kicker, and he has not panned out as a, you know, as a field goal kicker. Good, good kickoff specialist, but, but Nolan Hooser, high, like the national high school all-time leader in points. Yeah. Like, but for whatever reason, we do, and I am not a special teams expert, so I, I, I can't tell you what the, you know, what the issue is there. But it has been incredible that after how badly those missed field goals hurt you last week, that you allowed that to happen again. Like, what was the, like, what did you do during the week? And, you know, you couple that with a really, really subpar punting game. I thought Aiden Swanson actually had a better day today. I will say that. But for largely on the season, your punting game hasn't given you anything. And you don't have much of a return game. That's, That's how you have the 130th ranked special teams unit in the country. Is when you when you don't do any of those things well. The only thing they do decently well is is kickoff coverage, um, and, and so like I'm just I'm really tired of special teams being so unspecial at Clemson when you've been able to be great at everything else at different points through through Dabo Sweeney's tenure. And really, since uh, I mean, since BT Potter left which really, I mean, I, we're talking about two seasons, but since BT Potter left, you haven't, you know, that kicking game has been really inconsistent. And since, you know, shit, um, excuse my language. Um, uh, since Bradley Pinion got drafted back in what, 2015, I believe your punting game has been bottom half of, in the country, basically every single season. Yeah. Um, there, there needs to be an overhaul of special teams wise. I, I didn't want to make a huge rant about it, but th- what what we saw today, it, it, within the context of what we saw last week, that's a fireable offense. Somebody, th- there's got to be some somebody in in that room that is held responsible because this, I, I'm I'm tired of this. Yeah. Um, that that's got to be better, and and you, the, the the standard should be a lot better. And it really throughout Dabo's tenure, it. it it doesn't appear to be a priority. And that's that's pretty that's pretty sucky. Not gonna lie. Yeah, I mean, look, you mentioned that that special teams has been pretty much lackluster for all of Davos when he's tenure at Clemson. Uh there's been moments where we've been better at it. There's been moments where um it's significantly been better than it is now. Ne- right now is I think the worst it's ever been under Davos Sweeney as far as the special teams goes. Um and you're right. It's, it's unacceptable. And there's got to be changes made. Somebody has to be held accountable. Um, this is not, you know, this is not some anomaly that, that has happened. It has showed up consistently throughout the season. Um, and clearly, whoever's coaching it up in practice can't get it fixed, because if they could, it would have been fixed by now. Um, Florida, Florida, the Florida State game should have been the that yeah. should have been the end of it, especially yeah, when that, you had it happen been, multiple times State in that game. game. Yeah, should have been the anomaly where they were like, "Oh, okay, hold up, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta get this, we gotta get this right." Instead, it's continued several games afterwards, and and here we sit, um, with going into the halftime losing by seven points. Why? Not because of our defense, not because our defense gave up anything, but because our special teams, again, allowed pressure right up the middle, block kick, return for six points the other way. Absolutely unacceptable. Um, Dabo has got to get the special teams cleaned up. And then in the second half, you see, we finally make a field goal for the first time in God knows how long. And and we're like high-fiving and, and super happy on the sidelines. And and I get it. Like, but that's just – it's kind of embarrassing, honestly. Yeah. That we're it was a 34-yard kick. That we're celebrating a kick that much. Like, that just shows you how bad we are at kicking field goals that, like, this 34-yard kick was like the best thing that happened all day. Uh, <laughs> at least that's what it felt like in the moment. 
Um, and it's, it's at this point, it's unacceptable and it's got to be cleaned up. Um, and whoever is, whoever's teaching it up, whoever that, that off the field analyst guy that, that is essentially running the special teams to me is not getting the job done and, and changes need to be made. Uh, we cannot continue. Um, we, we have two of the better kickers coming out of high school on scholarship on our team right now. We got them in back-to-back recruiting classes and our kicking game is worse than it's ever been. It doesn't make any sense. So. Second, second year in a row. Like, last year should have been a, like a wake up call, considering you had to go get a, a grad a, a, a grad student that had a year of eligibility left off his couch to go kick for you. Like that, that should have been the thing in in your head that, um, uh, that, that should have been the head the, the the thing in your head that said, okay, you know, we we need to attack this differently than we've done in previous years, um, but. It's, it's it's no use of laboring it you know belaboring this point because there's yeah. nothing can be done in season about as far as you know your who who you have employed and all that like that's that's a different thing um talked about the offense in that first half defensively in that in the first half played about as well as you could ask um 88 yard 88 total yards of offense for Virginia Tech they had no semblance of a running game um you played pretty tight coverage. Uh, at, at times, I and then sometimes you would play off. I, I, I don't know. That sometimes with the things we do defensively in, in the backfield kind of confuses me because I, it's, it's like we don't trust our corners, but they actually play pretty well yeah. um, when you give them when when you just let them play um, and, and they it, it just play tight coverage. I mean, we saw that. Um, but regardless, really, really good response from the defense. Really, really good. I was very pleased with that. Credit to, to to Wes Goodwin, who has taken a lot of heat, a lot of it rightfully so. But I, I think that his 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 guys played well today. Um, and in that first half, that kept you in the in the football game where you your offense was sputtering and sputtering and sputtering, and your special teams had surrendered points. Um, they 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 kept you in that game. And made it so that you could call your your regular offense and, and get some things going in that second half without playing from a, a massive deficit. So um, defense definitely won, won the day for me. Um, yeah, and that that performance in that first half was was the difference, and you know this game possibly looking a little bit differently in the final score. Yeah, no doubt about it. Look, the defense came out um, with that kind of hair on fire that we were talking about the whole team coming out with, right? Going back to Wednesday when we previewed the game, we talked about, you know, this team coming out with a bit of, you know, a chip on their shoulder, um, a little bit extra. And the defense certainly delivered on that. I think Virginia Tech had six drives in the first half, three of which ended in punt. One ended in a a fumble lost. Um, Another one ended in a missed field goal. And then the last one ended in time expiring and going to halftime. So the defense was absolutely stifling in the first half. Love to see the adjustment by Wes Goodwin going to the three linebacker set tonight. I think it it was much better. Um, you, you could see the increased production. Sammy Brown went out there and absolutely did his thing tonight. Uh, I think it just freed up the defense to play a little bit more freely. Um, I think our linebackers played a lot better tonight in that three linebacker set than they have all season, really, in the two linebacker set. So, um I think seeing that that added production there was was really good. I'm glad to see the change was made, and really Virginia Tech could they couldn't get anything going. Um, the the idea was very clear heading into the game, going to that three linebacker set that we were not going to allow Virginia Tech to run all over us. We were not going to allow that happen, and they held their ground. They absolutely executed, um, particularly in that first half, but all game. Really, I think Virginia Tech ended up with maybe 40 yards rushing on the entire game, um, which is pretty amazing. Um, yeah. Considering what you, you gave up yeah, last considering, year. Considering, you know, you gave up 200 yards of rushing last game, um, and you've been gashed pretty much consistently all season on the ground, specifically when they can get around the edge and you're not setting the edge as well. Clemson's shown a, a propensity all season to allow teams to consistently gash them on the ground. And tonight it was a complete 180. 
Um, and they were physical. They were tackling. They were taking the proper angles. They were filling the gaps. Um, and it was a breath of fresh air to see our defense actually utilize their talent and go out there and execute for four straight quarters. Yep, absolutely. And um, credit to the the defensive line uh, for a lot of this game, you know, with without DeMonte Capehart, without Peter Woods. Yeah. Um, those guys stepped up today. Uh, Peyton Page, Trey Williams, Stephylon Green, man. Guys, I've been – if you guys have been watching this show for a long time, I've <laughs> been banging the Stephylon Green drum forever yeah. – that kid is special. He's going to be really, really good. Um, and so, like, I, I was, I was pleased with those guys. They, they stepped up. Um, and I, I think you, you got enough uh, on the back end uh, that you know you had some guys make some incredible plays that we'll talk about in the, in the, in the second half. Um, it was just a complete performance, and, it, and like I said, it kept you in this game uh, when things were absolutely not going well offensively. Yeah, absolutely. It was, you know, it was great to see. Let's go ahead and turn the page to the second half, Jordan. Um, and I think we got to start the second half with this Clemson offense because as much as they got in their own way with penalties and drop passes and poor decision making and poor execution in the first half and really killing their own drives. I don't really think Virginia Tech's defense did a ton to stop Clemson in the first half. It was really Clemson just messing it up for themselves. Well, they come out in the second half and the first two drives of the second half, they march down the field and they put touchdowns on the on the board. Um, big methodical drives. Um, well, kind of. Drives. You, you, you worked your way down the field and then you, you hit a couple of big plays. Right. Um, yeah, absolutely. And that happened yeah. like the middle part of the field. Yeah. Um, which is you, which is great. But you hit the explosive play. I mean, actually, you didn't even run. Clemson didn't run a play from the red zone until, like, what was it, like late in the third quarter, fourth quarter, something like that. Uh, so those two touchdown drives that you you punched in, you you didn't run a single play from the red zone. Um, so the explosive play was, ble- was back, um, eight plays, 60 yards for the first touchdown drive, um, three plays, 44 yards for the second touchdown drive. So – um, you just, you got it done, right? The, the, the offense finally got out of its own way, started executing, started hitting some big plays, getting those explosives, uh, Kate Klubnik creating outside the pocket, doing some craziness. Um, that second, t- that, that second touchdown, man, that was probably yeah. the best play he's, he's ever made. That was incredible. I have no um, clue how he was not sacked. Yeah. Um, I don't think the defender quite knows even right now. How he was not safe. It was a great play call. They brought. I think that was a, yeah. a safety, just a safety blitz off the edge, like on the blind side. Like yeah. Cade never saw that coming. I don't know how he stayed up. Somehow he was. eats the hit, spins out of it, uh, and then you know just drops a dot down the field. Um, and great awareness by TJ, man. That was yeah, that was just yeah, just just so finding working down the field, plates, settling down, holding his hand up for Cade, being like, "Here I am," and and Cade got it there. Um, you know, got just enough on it, and then, you know, TJ just makes a play, right, makes a guy miss and gets into the end zone um, because that's what you expect your skill guys to do. So um, like to see the offense come out of halftime with much better execution, right? And I think that's what – like going into halftime, I was like, man, here we go. Here's here's another day of just our offense – we're going to pile up a whole bunch of yards and we're going to have a whole bunch of nothing to show for it. And they come out and the first two drives of the second half are touchdowns. And that's the encouragement that, that you got to take away from it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and really it wasn't just, you know, Gary Riley scheming guys open. It was just sometimes, and I, I tweeted this, I said, sometimes football just comes down to your guy making a play and on both sides yeah. of the ball. And especially mm-hmm. in that, in, in that second half, you made, you had your guys make plays. Um, like I mentioned, K. Klubnik escaping that sack. Um, Cole Turner on that first touchdown, just it, great. It, it, he got open. He had a step on his defender, and probably you know it probably should have could have been a walk in touchdown if it, what the ball was a little bit you know better. Yeah. But he went up and got it anyway, like over the defender. I, I wasn't even upset about the the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty that he got because I was like I was this okay team needed a, like that was the spark that this yeah. team needed. And I didn't even I didn't even think it was that excessive. It was, it was a very soft 
call. He kind of did it, he, and then he like, looked at it, him. He looked, yeah, he quickly moved on. Like yeah. he didn't like. He didn't he like didn't stand it, over him and, 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 and start talking. But as soon as I saw him do it, I knew the flag was coming. Yeah. Uh, and then you knew Dabo Sweeney was going to go talk to him, and he did. But again, to your point, like I think that was the spark that the team needed. Um, and if we had to take a penalty there, so be it, uh, because he absolutely went up and got that ball. Um, yeah. And that that's part of what you're alluding to is like at the end of the day, your playmaker's got to go up and make plays. Uh, it's it's not going to be perfect. This is football. Um, you know, you can draw it up all you want and scheme and, and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, it's the guys on the field executing and them going up and making plays. And that's it. Yep. You uh, you know, Antonio, he had a kind of a rough first half. And in, in, in some ways, he had a couple of opportunities he would have liked to have back. But in that second half, that third down, when you were uh, backed up in your own territory, like a third yep. and nine, he just went, goes up and gets it. Um Probably right. The announcers were talking about a, a, a push. I was like, "Have you seen what what Virginia Tech's corners have been doing all day? Like they they've been grabbing good. our receiver. Like it's been a phys- like I'm I'm fine with that. Like that's yeah. like it's hard enough to play defense as it is, as especially defensive back. Right. So like I'm not upset when when you know guys get away with a grab as much as but if you but you got to let the receiver be physical too. Um, and so like I I thought you know that was a big play that that extended that drive. Um, you know, Jake Brenningstool stepped up in that second half after, you know, he had a couple of, of plays he wished he had back. So, I mean, your best players, you know, made plays in this game and that ultimately sparked you into the 24 points you scored in that second half um, and only surrendering that late touchdown um, at the end of the game de- defensively. So um, just a, a, a really strong second half, strong response. I don't know what they said in the, half, the, the halftime, but, you know, they, they, they it, I think this was more about the players than really adjustments that were made from the coaching yeah. staff. It was just the guys, you know, kind of put it together and, and woke up a little bit. Um, and a lot, of your biggest, a lot of your biggest plays tonight were was K just creating outside the pocket, broken yep. plays um, where he got pressure, he got out of it. He extended the play, he kept his eyes downfield, and the receivers ran the scramble drill and helped him out and got open. Um, you know, TJ Moore did it. Um, uh, you, you mentioned uh, Antonio Williams did it, right? Like all of these guys really helped Kate out. Brian so, Westco could have done it. That, man, that drop. That, 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 that drop was rough. Uh, he yeah. did do it. He just yeah. didn't complete it with a catch. Uh, but he did do it. He did help him out. He was open on the on the sideline. Kate Clubman got the ball there. And unfortunately, it wasn't Brian Wesco's best. Right in the bread basket. Um, he had a couple drops. He, he he ran the wrong route a time, one time, and he just he didn't. It, he couldn't it, find it, the ball the other that other time. Yeah, the other time the ball was up in the air, he could have caught it, uh, yeah. but he didn't know. And I guess the defender didn't know either because the defender yeah, right. he, he could have. That was it was it, it <laughs> wasn't was a bad ball by Cade. Like Brian's supposed to see see make make that side adjustment and work his way right. work his yeah. way back. Um, that was, I don't know. I don't know if there was like a light in his eye. I don't know what he saw. But. Yeah, I don't know what happened, but not not his best night. But again, look, um, a lot of it was just yeah. To your point, just our guys creating plays um, from broken plays from nothing, and and it worked out. And we made enough plays, and you know we come out there first two drives, put the put the ball in the end zone. Uh, third drive we punt, uh, and then we punch it in the end zone again, and then suddenly it's. You know, 21 unanswered points, it's 21 to 7. The game kind of feels out of reach at that point uh, yeah. because Virginia Tech's offense, again, transitioning to the defensive side of the ball, they really could do nothing with this Clemson defense. They had no answers. Um, you know, they, they, they tried to put the backup quarterback in, and he kind of provided a little bit of a spark, but it didn't really last long. Clemson's defense clamped back down. Um, yes, they had that late touchdown at, at pretty much the end of the game. Um, and I hate to see that because it was like a minute and a half left. But And you had gotten yeah. off the field on that fourth down. But when you they should have gotten off the field holding. on that fourth down. Yeah, yeah but they yeah, called the call a holding, uh, yeah. bailout Virginia Tech. They get another, uh, another set of downs, and they end up punching it in the end zone. Would have liked to see the defense be able to complete that shutout tonight, um, at least defensively. Unfortunately, um, they weren't able to do it, uh, but still a, a a really good performance by this defense coming off of a really, really bad performance last week. Yep. So. 
you got and, you got to be happy with the response, uh, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Yep, and you, I mean you forced two turnovers like after not forcing any la uh, last week. Yep, uh, that was big. Um, R.J. Mickens, I think they he got his first pick of the year. I, I, I said like yeah. if there was anybody in the secondary that deserved a pick, it was him because he's he's honestly been one of your most consistent players on either side of the ball. Right. Um, and then of course that that Ashton Hampton pick was was pretty that was insane. Pretty outstanding. Um, <laughs> I didn't think he caught it at first. Yeah, I was like, I oh, couldn't. I didn't know where the ball was. I thought the yeah. receiver, like I, I half expected the receiver to, to come down with like just somehow still be standing and, and just waltz into the end zone. Yeah, like it's, it's it's like he had a magnet in his hand and the ball and the ball just you know flew to his hand. It was it was crazy. That was um, awesome. And after and that was it. The play after he gave up a big kick. Like and he was yeah. to cover it to yeah. that same receiver, right? Um, gave up, gave up a big play. Um, that receiver got him, and then the quarterback goes right back at him. Um, yeah. You know, being like, "Yeah, I'm going to go right back at this freshman because you know it worked last play." And then suddenly, he comes up with this amazing um, interception. I mean, Ashton Hampton's not like normal true freshman corners, man. So he's. He's good, man. Yeah, I don't, not quite the guy you want to you want to pick on because uh, you see a freshman out there. He's yeah, he's not that one. And then you mentioned the one from from RJ Mickens, man. Like you, you see him read the quarterback's eyes. Uh, he read it the entire way. Knew exactly what the quarterback was going to do with the ball. He broke on it, jumped it, and that was it. Uh, clean interception. Um, good job by him of just paying attention to the quarterback's eyes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, any anything else that really stood out to you? I mean, we I think we we covered a good bit. Um, no, I mean that's that's pretty much kind of the the gist of the game. Really, it was a it was an absolute lights out performance by the defense. Um, the offense sputtered in the first half due to self inflicted um, injury or self inflicted. Uh, issues and then the second half they kind of broke free a little bit still got some big question marks on the offense this offense does not look right still um they look like a completely different offense coming out of the bye week and i don't mean that in a good way <laughs> um they they do not look like the offense that built all this momentum heading into the bye week they still look discombobulated at times they're not executing at times um some of the play calls I think are head scratching at times, uh, but at the end of the day, um, there was some improvement tonight. Uh, 